Hello everyone and welcome to the third episode um, of our YouTube channel and our podcast which is called Women in Leadership by Nari and Liz and I have my wonderful co-host with me uh, that's Liz. Hello all. Um, so just a quick uh, reminder of why we're here and what we do. So we love to empower women here to make them leaders, to, to help them to live the best version of their life, of, of themselves. Uh, we help them to make their confidence unstoppable, uh, to develop self-belief, uh, self-growth, create a mindset transformation uh, to give them a transformation and motivation in their lives to go and uh, set and achieve goals that they may have. Um, get, uh, detach from any kind of toxic or limiting uh, programming or self-beliefs and in, uh, conquering imposter syndrome, which is a huge area as well. So there's lots to talk about. In this particular episode, uh, number three, we are going to talk about the visionary empath as a version of a leader and how a visionary empath demonstrates leadership. So we're going to go straight into it in our usual style, which it will be a set of questions and answers from both myself and Liz's perspectives. And we'll see how we get on. So great. So the first question that we have is, what is a visionary empath to you? So I'll let you answer that first, uh, Liz. Well, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, everyone, depending on where you are uh, in the world. Uh, and uh, certainly looking forward to this subject. Um, so in order to to give myself some some time to think about this question, I looked up what a visionary empath is, and I thought it would be fun to just talk about what that definition is uh, and then my perspective on it. Um, so interestingly enough, um, it is defined as an individual who transforms relationships, teams, and organizations as a powerful creator, someone who is, has strength and engagement and is really active in the life that they've chosen. They have an, a gift for empathy. And so uh, in my perspective on that, considering that definition, I think that um, traditionally speaking, the empathetic components to leadership have been a miss. They have been missing uh, up until I would say the last 20, 25 years. And that actually coincides beautifully with the entrance of women into the glass ceiling type workplaces across the world. Uh, and I think that one of the things that women are socialized to do very early in life is to connect with other individuals, be they, you know, men, women, children, whatever. And as a result of being socialized that way, we've tended to not just genetically, but through our upbringing, increase our ability to really understand those moods of other people around us. Um, and I think that um, in order to be able to really have happy individuals working with you. We need a team cohesion. We need a team working well together. We need a team that performs. And the bottom line is that um, leaders are not necessarily simply influencers, right? They are individuals who, um, who actually get things done. And there are many ways to do that. But the whole empathetic approach really, really um, enables us to understand the, um, the emotions of our employees and our colleagues and our superiors and to really work forward on that. So Daniel Goleman is interesting. Uh, Daniel Goleman is the author of uh, many emotional intelligence pieces. Um, he's developed something called the Emotional Intelligence Quotient or the EQI. And in that, um, you know, he defines an, an, a leader as a person with the power to influence, but you can't influence without being supportive. So if you don't support and you don't inspire your team and you don't socialize with them at all and you don't understand the emotions, then you're essentially leading on fear or on processes. And although that has been the case in many organizations for many years, um, I think truly um, those that have that gift are able to move forward and really, really uh, achieve more by um, by achieving with, not 
taking a place in power and watching. It's a working together. So that's just my two cents. So how about you, Nori? What, uh, what is a visionary empath to you? Wow, that, that's an amazing answer. Lots of different elements and lots of food for thought to think about. And I absolutely agree with a lot of that. It's very much an evolutionary sort of thought process because like you said, this is something very new. It's something very much evolving in the workplace and in generally in life as well, because we, we can be leaders in all aspects of our life uh, to drive and move things forward. Uh, to me, a visionary empath is a person who's quite powerful, a person who is creative, so they have an open approach to the way that they think uh, they're strong-minded and they're engaged in their environment both within themselves uh, with their, their their colleagues their co-workers uh, people that they're, they're with their friends whatever the situation may be um, they're also very high alert so they, they're very conscious of what's happening around them uh, they're not just thinking about kind of here and now they're looking at lots of different elements and perspectives um, being an empath also means that you have this advantage that you can kind of um, check in to lots of different like I said, if, if, I said perspectives, but that also involves emotions as well. So it's almost like you've got, uh, if you look at it from a spiritual sense, you've got a third eye opening. So like they say, if you've got your third eye open, you've got an e even greater peripheral vision on what your surroundings are and how things are connected. And you can really feel that. And that is definitely a skill that is learned. Um, a lot of the times, you know, that comes from meditation, but also some people just are gifted with that skill naturally. Um, a, a visionary empath also expresses themselves with ease. They're very comfortable with themselves and they can express themselves because they're so used to understanding other people's feelings and emotions and expressions so they're able to match that with their own expressions as well and they're also able to give meaning and purpose to all of their interactions and they do that um, quite intensely they, they like to have a meaning and purpose behind it, every interaction every situation um, so they're very um, imaginary like I said creative they've got a lot of wisdom there's a lot of wisdom that comes with them um, empathy and uh, with that, like I said, they have a strong uh, direction for the future. That's where the visionary bit comes in, because that makes sense, because they're looking not one step, two steps. They're looking way, way, way ahead, you know, and how that will impact both themselves and people surrounding them. Um, and they have an idea of what the future should look like. So that's how they're kind of leading. They're creating on the basis of what the future should, should look like. Um, and because they're empathetic, they have the win-win scenario in mind. So they're not so selfish or self-centered. They always look for what is the best scenario for everyone. How can everyone's needs be fulfilled? So it's almost like a softer approach that's more team-based and more collaborative. And they're interested in creating lasting trusted relationships um, and lasting um, impact. So they're in it for the long haul. And that's how they behave right? Um, which takes you away from the traditional sorts of leaderships we've seen in the past, which is almost aggressive and rushed, um, autocratic, very much based on a bu uh, bureaucracy, um, mm -hmm. very clear lines of um, sort of command and control, and a very domineering approach. That's the old approach, but now the, the, the new approach will bring the visionary empath into it. They have considerations for feelings and people, how people, uh, you know, what people want, what their needs are. So, like I said, that's why it creates that long lasting impact. Um, so, yeah, um, they're very, very open minded, optimistic, cheerful something you touched on emotionally intelligent and this really take encompasses some of the things I've, I've just said and they're always looking for improvement but not just for themselves like I said for the whole team for everybody that's involved in whatever you know the task at hand is which is what the beauty of this new type of leadership is for me so mm. yeah it's a, it's a it's a big area and it's an interesting area it's a fabulous area, actually, um, because, you know, let's face it, um, there are individuals who could really benefit from this in their in their leadership style. Absolutely. 
So our next question, folks, is uh, focused on the elements of being or elements that are important to being an in visionary empath. So uh, Nari and I have come up with four uh, particular elements that we think are the most important uh, in, in defining what that is for us and for all of you that are listening and for people and uh, ladies in general. Uh, so the four areas are vision and intuition, and I'll be taking a look at those, followed by creativity and presence that Nari will focus on. And, you know, in my perspective, those four are all critical to the development of that empathetic leader. Um, so um, I guess I'll begin then, Nari, right? Um, and, and talk a little bit about vision and intuition. So for me, um, the whole context of using your empathy and your empathetic capacities in leadership uh, comes down to uh, intuition for me. And I'm going to do that one first because I think that um, that is one of the strongest pieces in all, in all empaths. Um, and our ability to actually not just see and generally externally empathize with others, but our ability to actually feel the struggles of those around us, where, whether those, uh, those emotions are joyful, our confusion, our negativity, or, or uh, grief or loss, those are things that empaths actually feel. And so in that, that leads to a really deep meaning and purpose. And I think that most of us who are, um, who are empath empaths and empathetic in nature, um, we actually, not only do we feel what others are feeling around us, but we need that depth of purpose in order to really jump in and in order to really make uh, things happen for ourselves. We need to buy into um, what it is that we're doing and truly feel that we're serving others in that context. Intuition is that gut feeling, as many people call it, and you'll see Jack Welsh and many other writers in the leadership field talk about the gut, the gut feel. And essentially, that's, that's listening to your intuition, more or less. Um, and many of us talk about making those gut decisions. Um, and we hear that, that from many managers and leaders in all sectors. And that is really us tuning into that intuition. And without that, uh, in my view, there's really no empathy. Um, but in order to then be visionary, uh, we need to tap into the, the traditional structures of vision in that we're looking at things like setting goals, looking at the future, blue skying, uh, you know, looking at what will come uh, into the future. And all of those things are important, uh, but we need to build that future and we need to blue sky that future, including things like collaboration and the commitment on our part and the commitment of others working with us and mutual respect. And without, we can, we can set whatever vision we want to set and we can set whatever goals we want to set for a team to reach. But in my view, we need, we need everyone drawn to the cause. We need everyone passionate and, and uh, passionate about where we're going. And in order to do that, we have to offer compassion. Um, and we need to build a future based on this collaboration. So sometimes what can come from that is a bit of a challenge on focus, uh, focus on that future goal, set of goals. Um, because we need to make sure that we meet those goals and we need to make sure that we meet those goals the right way. So that's sometimes a challenge for the visionary empath is to remain focused as we're building those relationships around us. Um, finally, in my view, the, the context behind this intuition vision is what's often called the warrior spirit. Um, and that meaning that's that individual that can stand up, can make the right decisions, for, not just for themselves, but for others, and can truly use their vision to reach that goal and use their intuition to feel around them as we go. And that leads to a lot of really strong decision making. Um, we sometimes know that, uh, that we have to retreat, for example, or we need to move forward. And those are other skills that come with this intuition and, and the vision component. So um, Nori, without further ado, I'll let it to, leave it to you to, to talk about creativity and presence, which are super important. 
Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, they go all four of four of them go hand in hand. Um, and I love the elements that you've discussed and how you've described them. So thank you very much for that input. So with that, we also have creativity and presence, which are the ones that I'm going to talk about. So initially, if I go on to creativity, so um, this falls very naturally for a visionary leader, actually, because as, as we discussed earlier, uh, for a visionary empath, they are actually naturally very inclined to be creative. So they love to think outside the box. They don't mind taking a risk. Uh, they're very explorative in their nature. You know, naturally they want to explore, they're an adventurer. They have lots of ideas, so they're not restricted. The whole, it's all kind of built around this sort of scenario of having an open mind. So being creative is just very natural. Um, so with those ideas, which are, are limitless, by the way, there's no limit to it. It's very much based on, based on a growth sort of way of looking at things. They, they're they able to um, tune into their intuition. They're very intuitive and they use that to their advantage. Um, they're, they're, they, they're a great communicator. They like to communicate um, with other people. They like to get other people's ideas. They like to get other people involved. That's uh, their creative nature because the more perspectives we have, the more ideas we have, the more we open our eyes to, to growing and learning more. And um, when, when we think, for example, if we look at the opposite, we know it all and we, it's all in our head and we can do everything we need to do without other people's support or without working as a team or trying to get like um, the limelight just by yourself without, you know, taking other people with you. Um, that's the opposite of a, a creative, a visionary, empathetic leader. So, 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 so the, the being communicative is huge. Uh, also, they're empathetic, which is obviously in the name. They are empathetic. They can feel. That's natural. Uh, they take those other people's feelings into consideration. So they're very good at what creativity is about, which is transforming ideas, imagination, and making them into a reality. So they're great at that uh, transformational process of an idea to actually a reality. And they're also good at finding hidden connections between things that maybe wouldn't normally be relevant and having um, an empath, sorry, an outcome, having an outcome with the views and opinions uh, of others for the most optimal, best um, outcome that can be achieved. So I love creativity for, um, <laughs> for that topic and it fits in so nicely. Right, so the next one, which is presence, and this one's absolutely huge for life in general. But the reason why a visionary empath is so present is because of the differentiating factors that they exhibit. The newness in their energy compared to what we've seen before, what we're used to. So sometimes people can get very uncomfortable and confused by the introduction of a visionary empath, empathetic leader, because it, it just doesn't fit in with the old um, closed box um, description of maybe what a leader should be like, because this is very explorative. So they, as, as well as en encompassing feelings, they're also very competent. They, they, they have self-validation. They don't need to get that externally. So they elude confidence with conviction. They're confident in their own skin. Uh, for that reason, they're very assertive in the way that they come across. So they, they, they have great body language. They make eye contact. They take responsibility to, uh, to be, and they're fluent, right? Um, like I said, they're effective communicators. So they use uh, the right language. Um, they're also assertive, so they're very aware of what's going on around them, and they're assertive enough to think beyond the moment and think beyond themselves as well. So they've conquered their ego. That's another part of the assertion, which is huge, um, and it's very rare. And this is, again, the, the kind of person people can't understand because people who do exhibit their ego, ego as a dominant factor in their personality, they think everybody's like that. But when, when you have an empath, they don't come from that same angle. And that's uh, the difference that, that people maybe can't understand. They're very knowledgeable. So they've done their homework. They're prepared. And because of this inner wisdom that they have being an empath, they're able to look at the long term. 
um, alongside that comes the calm and consistent nature with which they uh, present themselves. That is an element of their presence as well. Um, and sometimes um, you can, I don't know if you've ever heard about like people who can like have presence without being seen. So they're there, their presence is there, but you don't actually need to see them because you can feel them. And that, that's kind of what, what I mean. Um, they're very interested in what people have to say. So they're able to listen rather than be the person that's always speaking, the person that's always right. They're able to listen to other people, take other people's perspectives into consideration. They're obviously very positive. Uh, that's why they're visionary. They're, they're, they're you know, they're, they're looking at the positive elements, and they're not focusing on uh, past failures or toxic behaviors and things like that. They're looking at the positive. Uh, they have an open mind. Um, uh, it, it, in terms of their presence, they're very adaptable. They're very flexible. This is what adds to to that. Uh, that standing that they have and the differentiating factors. Also, they're, they're a, because they're, they're kind of um, self-validating, comfortable in their own skin, they're able to present themselves authentically. So that means like, if you're funny, just be funny. If you're a geek, just be a geek. Like you don't need to hide who you are to impress other people or to uh, fit certain roles to, to match other people's expectations. And that's why that's why they are a leader with all of those um, skills that they have um, present. And um, they're, they're also able to be vulnerable so they can balance being confident and self-assured with being humble. So they have humility and that adds to that presence as well. And lastly, I, I read this thing, which I thought was really interesting and I really liked it. I love, I love people like this. I like to think I can be like this sometimes, but uh, it's a mixture of education and ent entertainment. So you're able to come across with knowledge and humor at the same time. And I absolutely love people like this. And there's a word for it. It's called edutaining, edutaining. Ed yeah, so, so you're mixing education, entertainment, and it makes learning all that more fun and it's constant learning. So I think they have that because they can be authentic with themselves, they can exhibit the, the real behaviors, the natural behaviors, not hiding anything. So they have a tendency to be able to exhibit th that as well, which is just great. So um, yeah, uh, I think it fits in really nicely with those four different factors. Um, and that that's how I feel that, that um, to conclude the presence bit comes into it. So really interesting. Mm -hmm. Agree. Yeah. Um, okay, so shall we move on to the third question then? Sure. Perfect. So I'm gonna ask you this, uh, Liz, uh, give me an example of when you used one or more of these elements that we've discussed to demonstrate leadership courage. You know, leadership courage is something that has been written on a lot. Uh, there are a lot of authors that work in this area. And in a lot of ways, um, sometimes I think that many of these authors have missed the mark. Um, but Douglas MacArthur is, is someone who has really, I think, captured it well. So I'm going to read you that and then talk about my example, if that's okay, Nori. Yeah. Sure. So MacArthur said, a true leader has the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make decisions, the compassion to listen, and the gut feel of the needs of others. She does not set out to be a leader, but becomes one by the equality of her actions and the integrity of her intent. And the reason why I've picked that is because so many times in my career, I felt the need to stand alone. I felt the need to stand up for what was important to, as, as you've said in your last piece, the humility is key, Nori, and the clarity and the courage all has to come together sometimes. And one example that I'll use is um, at one point I was the director of the faculty for the Canada School of the Public Service, and I was responsible for the finding, training, uh, creature comforts, uh, and the operations behind the faculty at the school. 
And what always happened in that organization at the management tables was that our faculty, which are were our front facers, right? They were the base of the organization. It was an educational institution. Um, they were always considered last. And I was the individual responsible for um, finding them, training them, keeping them happy, and um, saving our organization a large amount of money. And in that, um, what always happened at these tables was the faculty never came into the conversation. And it was one of those places where I consistently went, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was one of those places where I did have to stand up alone and clarify the needs of that population on a pretty regular basis. I did that at our, at our senior management tables with our deputy minister on a pretty regular basis. Um, and I then became over time the voice of the faculty. But without that, if I had not stood up and I had not stepped out of my comfort zone and the comfort zone of all of those around us, um, nothing would have happened and we would not have ha ended up with a national faculty, which as I mentioned, saved our organization four to $5 million a year, which was pretty significant on a budget of about $80 million. So, you know, in that context, um, oftentimes we're not, we're not terribly popular when we have to stand up for what we believe in, but it's important. And without us doing that and without us using our courage, and it really is truly our courage and our humility to say, um, you know, respectfully, I disagree and this is why. Um, we would not be making the inroads that we've made in our careers and in the lives of those around us. And I think, interestingly enough, just to sum up that example, uh, one of my assistant deputy ministers and I were sitting talking one day and he said, you know, he said, you don't lead. You only lead if people will follow. And I thought, hmm, that's pretty interesting from someone who knew nothing about leadership theory, because the bottom line is that we sometimes have to stand up and we sometimes have to, um, you know, use our intuition when it's right to stand up and when it's not. And we need to use our creativity to say, you know what, let's find a different way to make our faculty important in this organization. And without that presence, um, we wouldn't be considered and we wouldn't be um, given the credibility. So that's my, my example. Um, so how about you, Nori? What, uh, what is your example of that? Thanks very much, Liz, for sharing that great example. And I love that about, you know, going against the grain, standing up for what's right. And this is absolutely, uh, even if you have to stand alone, but you you say what's right and you do what's right, that that, 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 that I believe is the right thing to do. So thank you very much for um, giving me that courage and our listeners that courage as well to 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 exhibit that behavior and know that it, it's, it's a good thing. So uh, for me, um, well, with my previous jobs, I've, I've done a lot of international travel. And I remember once I was in New Jersey in, in America and uh, I was at a, a very key supplier that was producing a piece of equipment for us. Uh, we used to work on um, aviation aircraft and um, we'd basically got this uh, contract with them. We'd, we'd, we'd discussed all the technical specifications of what was going on and it was basically flowing. I was then um, I was then there uh, for a couple of weeks and I started to notice that um, things didn't seem authentic. So we were having our daily meetings. I was pro, uh, conducting progress with them in terms of how the pro project's going, how the, the build schedule's going, um, how the milestones are being met, how the risk analysis is happening. But within that, I started to realize that there's something being left out here. And I, inside my head, knew that this was very much linked to a customer milestone. It was a massive risk for us if they were not able to deliver on time to the specification that we needed. You know, we were not able to get anything um, wrong. So I had to um, be that communicator between. So I was there all by myself in the States and I was then communicating back to the UK. I had to be informative, I had to be communicative, uh, I had to be assertive. I had to then take a risk. And based on my own intuition, I had to initiate plan B, which was an, another supplier, which meant starting from scratch, right? Um, 
And I looked at the timeline that was available before the customer milestone will come into place and initiated that in parallel. So it was very much based on the risk analysis and scoring highly enough in order to spend the budget alternatively in the other area. Anyway, it all came to fruition and I was right, thankfully, uh, that, that that project fell apart with the company that was in the States and it was always doomed to do that. There was some unethical behavior going on and the business relationship was a little bit tarnished so we managed to get the alternative in place in time meeting the customer deadline which was linked to a milestone payment in, you know about up to about five hundred thousand pounds not just for that particular piece of equipment but a number of things coming together that was an um, element of it so i was i believe assertive i was very, showed my presence i had to be confident in what i was saying i had to convince leaders way above me um directors of the company and i had to see the problem from everyone's perspective so um, I feel I did that and I was very proud of myself and thankfully I did get commended and recognised that for that in the organisation and I always look back at, back, back at that as um, something that I'm, I'm proud of and um, I'm, I'm, I learned a lot from it so I was really glad to be part of it even though the process was difficult the outcome was the best we could have had and um, I'm so glad that I played a significant part in the process to getting to that winning end. So that brings us on to our last question then Liz. Um, and the, the, the question I'm going to ask you, first of all, if you could answer this, please, is how you see the visionary empath, how does that fall in line with the leader of tomorrow, of the future? So I'll hand it Great over. Great question. Great yeah. question, Noreen. Um, it's funny. When I think about the leader of tomorrow, uh, I think about what the leader of tomorrow was 20 years ago and what the leader of tomorrow is going forward for us now. And in fact, there's actually a, not a lot of difference in that. Um, my perspective is that visionary empathy is leadership of tomorrow. Um, it was leadership of tomorrow 20 years ago, and I think it is still leadership of tomorrow going forward. And the reason why I say that actually comes in the words of an individual who published his first book in 1954. Um, and his name is Robert Greenleaf. And Robert Greenleaf has published extensively on something he calls the servant leader. Um, and the quote from Robert Greenleaf is, the servant leader is servant first. It begins with the natural feeling that one wants to serve others. Then one makes the conscious choice to aspire to lead. And his whole philosophy has always been without intuition, creativity, presence, courage, and that vision as an overarcher, we're not good leaders. Um, we can lead by our position. We can use positional leadership. We can use fear. We can use goal attainment solely. We can use quality systems. All of those things are great systems. But the bottom line is without our service to others as leaders, we don't build the relationships that we need to build. And today in particular, when you look at organizations that are now all over the world and we have organizations that have been so flattened by this whole COVID period that all of us are working from home so without relationships imagine you can't if you're a, a positional leader that that rules by fear how do you go stand at Susie's cubicle and say I need that now well you can't <laughs> right so now that Susie's working from home and so are you it's all about their trust in you and your trust in them. It's about your relationship with them. And, um, you know, without being servants to those, to our teams and to our colleagues, how are we going to build the, the um, motivation to continue moving forward when individuals are sitting 
by themselves all day in an office at home. And also, while well, individuals are dealing with small children at home, and there's all of these challenges that we're dealing with today that I think are setting the tone, hopefully, for going forward, um, that that whole intuitive, you know, empathetic approach, it either makes us or breaks us, and it's going to get harder and harder to rule without it, quote unquote, to rule without it. Um, so, you know, that's my perspective on that. And I think that... Um, uh, actually, Mahatma Gandhi has a really great quote that I'm just going to finish on today because I think it's it's one of those things that made me sort of sit back and go, whoa, because he said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service to others. And I have done that for my career as a leader, and it has been very, very successful in Sorry, I muted myself for some reason. <laughs> it's all the arms moving while I'm talking. <laughs> it just hit Zoom. Um, so, you know, I think without without that, um, we are not going to be effective leaders going forward. And, you know, 20 years ago, that was not in the mainstream. And I am hoping that the, the mainstream continues to honor these relationships. Over to you, Nori. What do you think? What... Uh, what uh, what would you like to speak of in terms of the leader to, of tomorrow? Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you so much. And I think, you know, with the circumstances, especially with all the lockdowns and COVID, obviously, it's huge. It has really changed people's perspectives and people are more aligned to actually their well-being, to self-care, because they're realizing that they were just being exhausted and tortured by this like way of working, way mm -hmm. of way of like um, conforming to leadership styles. Right. I mean, I for one know know what it's like. Um, just being around people who expect certain things, and you know, being very around very strict people who need to see you there in order to believe that you're working. Well, guess what? We've been working perfectly well for the last over a year. In fact, people have been working even harder. Right. Uh, people have been putting in overtime, uh, working from home because they haven't got that two-hour commute that they were used to, which used to probably exhaust them without even you know, forget the working, just commuting used to be tiring enough, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the way I see, I'm just going to go through a few different elements. And so I say that the visionary empath, because they're able to see everyone's perspective, uh, they, they, they can um, adapt to multiple per perspectives uh, consistently and coherently. So they're able, able to navigate and thrive from that plane, right? that's what I believe is so important for, for the future um they're able to stay curious which means they've got an open mindset they, they, they're looking for growth um and there's endless possibilities of that they're able to connect with people through a sense of wonder um so di different people's skills passions challenges it comes it all comes together able to understand different people that is such a huge element of it whereas before I believe it was almost like everybody's a robot they've got a job to do you've got your this is your input this is your required output right so these are your KPIs and this is what I need you to do and people just conform out of fear okay so people are more able to come out and be open about things like that especially if these leaders promote that so for example if the leader is promoting that open sort of minded approach then you're more likely to get options for improvement, recommendations, suggestions, because people aren't afraid of putting their ideas across and they actually feel like they're gonna be listened to and rewarded for that, yeah? Um, the, the visionary empath is also able to stay creative, like I said, so use skills between industries um, and have a flexible, adapt, adaptable, adaptable attitude towards that, which is great. So this new kind of leader, which encompasses the visionary empath, they have this entrepreneurial flair about them. Um, regardless of the title, they are entrepreneurial at every stage in a company's uh, strategy. And that's what's needed to have this sort of approach. Uh, something we spoke about earlier, they're able to express, so great communication skills and as we know especially especially after the pandemic we've got used to using technology even more than before um we're all we're all on teams on zoom all the time and um as technology consumes us working on that human interaction 
the skills for doing that need to be upgraded alongside the technological evolution as well right because we're still humans at the end of the day we're not robots <laughs> not yet <laughs> we might have some robots around us in the future when we've got um ai but not yet not quite yet uh visionary leaders also they also know themselves so this uh this quote that i heard was know thyself grow thyself you can only grow if you actually fully know yourself and and uh, promote other people to do the same so figure out acknowledge your challenges uh acknowledge your strengths what makes you happy and then seek out the strengths and res uh, the resources and the opportunities to to look after yourself and grow and to look after other people and grow and this is exactly the sort of skills a visionary empath has um the visionary empath like i said earlier because they're authentic they're able to ask for help and they're able to make it easier for others to ask for help they're able to network networking is key i mean to be honest it's ever more paramount now that it's not what you know it's who you know which is a little bit sad because um i've noticed this many times in my past where i, I see people who are super intellectual super credible and humble but they don't have that that confidence and that presence about them which really holds them back and the opposite of that is sometimes people who aren't so authentic, but they get ahead through their personality or the way that they navigate people. But the um, the visionary empath doesn't do that. They they are actually fully credible, fully humble, and they do things um, authentically, organically. Um, and actually, that kind of leader would approach that quieter person who might have all the skills, who might have all the knowledge, and promote them and get them to get out of their comfort, cell, um, comfort um, zone and elevate rather than just ignore them because they think, oh, well, they're not confident. I'm getting what I want out of them. And I've seen this so many times. It's so sad, but it's about being rewarded for what you can provide, what your output is, what your skill level is, not the way that you speak necessarily or how good you are at um, fooling people. <laughs> and I, there's two sides to it, isn't it? But the visionary empath is very much mindful of those sort of char good characters that they want to elevate within an organization or within an environment. They also have a huge check on ego. So um, the best leaders, leaders of the futures are those who are supporting their teams, not bossing them around, which is what, what, what the um, visionary is doing. Absolutely. Making peace with uncertainty. So being comfortable with the ups and downs, figuring out a balance um, and how to stay standing throughout it. So that, that that's where you get your resilience comes into it. And finally, I would say playing well with others. And that's about treating everybody equally with love and respect, regardless of their title or their position. Uh, the empath is not concerned with the title because they're not trying to show off, right? They're willing to put the hard work in and grow um, authentically. Um, the empath is concerned with people and results because at the end of the day they're still a leader they've still got a job to do they still need an outcome so of course we are concerned with the results but at the same time the people so uh, i don't know if you've ever heard of that caption uh, people over profit so you have a profit but you, you're able to consider people's feelings at the same time so when you do get those results you get them authentically people are satisfied people are happy and you're getting the results that you want because actually people are willing more willing to work or more inclined to work harder for you if they feel that you trust them that you value them so in the end it's the win-win situation that i spoke about earlier where everybody's needs are met and everybody's happy in an ideal world uh but but generally that's what i would say the visionary um empathetic leader of tomorrow tomorrow that's how they sit and that's how i see it so so that's a uh, that's a uh, yeah it's been really really interesting uh, interview today and that's the end of our um, four questions that we've mapped out before the interview so any uh, concluding thoughts um liz well i just want to say that i really like that answer of yours and i think your point about you know low, low that know thyself grow thyself would be a really great way to sum up today's piece um you know we can't be there for others if we don't know who we are and we don't know how to be authentic and to you know to look after ourselves 
So that's great. And I'm looking forward to our next one. Nori, when's that one? We, what are we going to do next? Do we know yet? I guess we don't know yet. So anyway, folks, stay tuned. I'll pass it over to you to conclude. Stay tuned, guys. Yeah, we've got a number of different topics that we're still uh, playing around with. And we've got lots more content to come. Like I said, there'll be other people joining us as well in the future. So please do stay tuned. Uh, stay loyal. Um, like, subscribe. Um, like, like I said earlier, I think I'm, I say it every week, but I'll say it again. You can find me on Instagram, Sky High Leadership or Sky High Empowerment Coach. And Liz, where can we find you? Uh, well, you can find me at elizabethhawkster at gmail.com and on my Facebook page, Elizabeth Hawkster Coach for Life Transition and Resilience. Wow. Uh, so powerful. I love that. Okay, then. So we're going we're gonna to conclude that of today's session and we look forward to seeing you next time. Stay tuned. Bye.